This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this lesson is Your Small World. A friend shared how he had become upset at someone, leading to an unhappy blow-up between them. The matter was still rippling in the background, and he was unsure how to resolve the matter now that others had been brought into the contention. I thought of how our own bigness affects how we can handle things. Small people end up scrapping with each other, like cats in an alley. They end up in a scratch-for-scratch -scratch brawl, with neither able to walk away or fix the problem. They are too small to be big enough to end it. People who are more mature, bigger on the inside, can deal with things in better ways than those who fight like cats and dogs. I recall a situation before I was married to Susan. She became upset with the minister of her church because he didn't seem to respect something she felt was from God. That offended her and she expected me, as her champion, to challenge the minister. Confrontation was not my natural instinct, and I was too immature to know how to help Susan, so my only option was to do as she demanded, or seem to be an unworthy person. Reluctantly, I went to the minister's home to tell him his faults, on behalf of Susan, who was waiting in my car. I went to the door and met the minister and told him he had really upset Susan and she was feeling hurt. He listened politely, then thanked me for sharing that with him. That wasn't the response we were wanting. Susan was sure she needed an apology from him. I repeated my message, hoping that might prompt him to say he was sorry or something. But he simply answered politely and thanked me for sharing that with him. Susan and I were both unsatisfied by that outcome. When I shared that experience with my pastor a few days later, he asked, Who showed the most grace on that occasion? I realized it was the minister. My pastor didn't say any more but left me to think about that. Susan had become upset, and she wanted an apology that she probably didn't deserve. She wanted to force an outcome that served her preference. I fell into line with her demands. The minister simply responded graciously, but not as a pawn to either of us. He didn't yield his will to Susan's demands, but he also didn't become annoyed with her or try to put her in her place. He simply responded with grace and let the matter pass. He was big enough to handle the matter wisely and without escalating it or reacting. He lived in a big enough world to accommodate Susan's annoyance without his world being destabilized. People in a small world find their world is easily upset and put off balance. All those people who are quick-tempered, hasty to react, quick to demand their own way, willing to contend with others, feeling the need to correct people or give them advice or otherwise bouncing in the wake of others, signal they have a small world. A huge ship is not upset by the wake of a much smaller boat, but small boats can be tossed around by waves and wind or the wake of a larger vessel. You can tell who lives in a small world by how easily they are upset by others. A big person is not reactive, but proactive. They make plans and take action, but don't have to react to what others do. King Solomon praised such people. In Proverbs 19.11 he said, The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger, and his glory is to overlook a transgression. It takes a big person to be able to do what Paul tells us as Christians to do, having a sweetheart attitude toward one another. In Ephesians 4.32 Paul said, Be kind and tender-hearted to one another, forgiving one another, even as in Christ God forgave you. We start life in a very small world of our own hunger and desire for affection from our immediate family. Gradually we become aware of the larger world around us, but we look at that world through our own eyes, interests, and selfish perspective. We develop our view of the world and where we fit into it, and in our human self-interest, we look for how to make our world comfortable and suitable to us. If we become fearful, we put loads of protections into our world. If we become greedy, we look for how to get things. If we are insecure, we look for those who will give us comfort and assurance. If we suffer loss by theft or by missing out, we can become jealous over things we have. In that process, we craft for ourselves a small world, which we can control and through which we can serve our self-interest. If we have wise parents and trainers, we will be taught godly principles and learn to give room for God and others in our world. 
If we have self-serving people around us, we might develop a dog-eat-dog survival mentality. Most people end up living in their own small world. It can be filled with knowledge, money and privilege, but still be small in that we want to control it and make it serve us. Over time, hopefully, and with good heart training, we can become big and live in a big world. In that case, we will be generous of spirit, not stingy. We'll be gracious and forgiving, not resentful and spiteful. We will have hope and security, not fear and miserliness. We will have faith and trust, not insecurity and distrust. We will make room for and appreciate others, rather than closing them out of our life. Your small world has been crafted by you, through your life, to serve you and ensure you get what you want and keep what you have. It is about you blessing yourself and protecting yourself from others. In the worst case, you become a dungeon lord of your own miserable cave. Those who have to live with you suffer under your small-mindedness, need to control everything, and care only for yourself. I wrote a post titled Dungeon Lord, addressing some of these ideas over a decade ago. Check out that historic post by searching for Dungeon Lord at chrisfieldblog.com. Despite what you've built for yourself in the past and what pride, greed, selfishness, fear, anger, pain or whatever prompted you to make it as you did, that can all be discarded. God has made you wonderfully new and that allows you to abandon your small world. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, Any man in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And Galatians 6.15 says, Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. And Ephesians 4.24 says, Put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You can begin to live in freedom and with grace, forgiveness and love in your heart. You can be generous where you were selfish and you can live for God and others where you only thought about yourself. You can live in faith and hope instead of fear. You can make room for others instead of pushing them away. You can stop using people for selfish motives and start blessing people for the sake of God's kingdom. You can open the windows of your heart and life to allow the sunshine of God's love to fill them. I urge you to recognize your smallness and to humbly give all of that to God. Allow Him to heal and restore you and to build you into a big person filled with all the fullness of God. And as you do those things, saved from the person you used to be and made more and more like Christ, may you completely abandon what was once your small world. God bless you.